the merchants would like to give away like a NFT or crypto uh, loyalty points to their their customer, their loyal customer, and then they have to go through the wallet setup. Hey there, and welcome to PayPod, where we bring you conversations with the trailblazers shaping the future of payments in fintech. My name is Kevin Rosenquist. Thanks for being here. Here's a hot take for you. Crypto could be a divisive topic. Some people are all in, touting it as the future of finance. Others think it's fool's gold. Some are in the middle somewhere, and most don't even know what the hell it is. But what if you could pay for products and services with your crypto? And what if you could do it at a brick and mortar? That's what Pekka Wan and the team at PundiX are doing. They've built a crypto POS system that allows merchants to accept crypto payments from customers. Crazy, right? And I'm sure you have questions about how something like this could possibly work. Pekka sheds light on how they've tackled concerns about volatility, security, and everything else that might make your eyebrows go up when hearing about a crypto POS product. Is it the future? Well, I'll let you decide. Please welcome Pekka Wan. I spied on your LinkedIn a bit. Uh, you, you, your first degree came from uh, National Sun Yat-sen University. Yeah, Sun Yat-sen University. Oh, I was close. That's good. For me. <laughs> it was in, in your degree was in English literature. Yes. And you also directed and acted in English plays. You were a member of the drama club. Was there was there anything in particular that that drew you to English lit and and drama? Well, uh, I love drama. I love being a producer and director for the. For the play, and that was my hobby in my high school, and then I took it to the university. So after I got into this university, I majored in English literature, and just just happened that uh, our professor, he is also the director of the of the English drama. So wow. so I just sign up, and then I'm. Actors, actress, and also the director of at play. So that's, it that's was an, quite it's an, fun. It's an ambitious major for you know. I mean, you know, just because English is not your first language. So, like, how difficult was that to brace that as an entire major? Is 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 very ambitious. Right. So I have been practice a lot regarding the line, and I think most of us studying in Taiwan, if you are interested. Or major in English, you would try to improve uh, your pronunciation, your speaking uh, capability, and then I think the drama is a opportunity to practice this and then to a more advanced level. And I cannot remember all the lines, but but at that time we have been practice a lot and then try to speak as native as possible. But it's it's not easy to be honest. I'll bet. I mean, I, seriously, when I said ambitious, I I mean it. Like that's that's a tough that's a tough one to to go into. And and uh, yeah, I mean, was there was there any particular part of it that drew you in that you were like, I really want to do this? I think I just like acting. My dream in during the childhood, and my mom said that uh, acting won't you know earn money and keep you. <laughs> keep yeah. your living, keep up with your living. Well, it's and obviously very hard. It's very difficult. Yeah. 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 It's very difficult. You're not like, uh, she said, you're not like uh, Angelia Julie or anything like that. And then you should give up as early as possible. Oh. So Chinese parents are very practical. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. So that's why I, I am so into you know, getting into acting during my university because this is o- the only time I can do the acting. Right? Yeah, yeah. Before before yeah. real life so takes that's over. Why. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's not ambitious at all. It's just that I love acting, so I try to make the best use of my university life to do yeah. that. Yeah. Well, if it makes you feel better, my parents are American, not Chinese, and uh, I wanted to be a rock star, and uh, they told me that wasn't practical either. So. <laughs> oh, okay, not, that that might feel you. <laughs> yeah, I saw you play basketball in college too. Huh? Yes, were you, yes, were, you pre- were you pretty good? Actually, I'm tall. My height uh, in in the school, and then my best friend in in, in university, she loved playing basketball, and then she said, 
Peggy, you need to join the team, basketball team, because I need to win this. So, <laughs> so I joined the <laughs> I your team. Height. Yeah, because of my height. Yeah. So that was my first time to play bas- basketball. And yeah, I love it. That's awesome. Yeah, you, do you still I love it? I don't reject any sports. Um, I love sports. Oh, nice. Nice. I, I do as well. So yeah, that's that's awesome. So so next you got an MBA in international marketing. So marketing, PR, and communications has been a large part of your career. And, right. And now you're co-CEO of, of Pundi X, a, a company that's working on the world's first point of sale solution that will allow retailers to accept crypto. So f- with a marketing background, how, how different is it to market a crypto and bro- blockchain company from other companies that you've you've done marketing for, especially given how many people just don't really understand what it is still, you know? Yeah, you're right. We spend a lot of time to educate merchants. And especially when we start in 2018, not many merchants know, basically no merchants knows, and then they have no needs of adopt, accepting cryptocurrency. So uh, most of the merchants that we had at that time were early adopter, and they are very, very excited about our technology and would love to adopt the, the solution. And they, uh, for those people, they self-learned and they, they help us to improve the products. And for those, we also go to store by store and then to ask merchants to adopt the system. We got a lot of rejection at that time. And then uh, they have a lot of concern regarding what if I, what if Bitcoin decreases value overnight and then my payment would de- decrease its value as well. And then how am I going to pay my inventory? <laughs> because when they sell Coca-Cola or they sell coffee, a cup of coffee or clothes, they will love to, they need to pay their rent. They need to pay their employees. And how could they tackle those type of issues? And that was actually one of my questions later on. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm excited so, to learn about that too. Yeah. So we, we know this, this issues because when we built this platform and uh, there are two major challenges. One is that Bitcoin is very difficult to, to be used as a payment because it takes a lot of time to confirm on the mainnet. And then second is that, and a lot of people, they don't know about crypto. They don't know about wallets. They don't know about private key. They don't know about, um, setting up a wallet or just, or buy crypto. And also the merchants has concern regarding the, uh, price volatility, crypto price volatility. So we need to resolve these three major issues. So first of all, we started as a, a centralized platform that uh, people need to have our wallet and then uh, they need to use our XPOS system, which is the POS uh, point of sale system that specifically designed for crypto. And then they interact well, with the wallet that we have uh, published and designed. And it's, more like a centralized service. And also they have a card. We issue like a debit card, but uh, it's only available in our system. And then it's it's totally a centralized uh, solution. But the good thing is that you can actually have this confirmation done in less than one second. So you don't need to wait for a long time. And also it is similar to what it was what it is uh, today uh, for a lot of uh, digital pay service. So you have to download their app, you have to support their app. So people are used to, you know, the centralized solution. And then with the time goes by and we see that a lot of people, they use uh, their own uh, private wallet and they use all kinds of uh, crypto wallets to to pay. And then uh, we decided to um, take this transaction on chain and then to support uh, multiple blockchain for the on-chain transaction. So people just use their, uh, for example, trust wallet or uh, MetaMask, and then they can pay at the merchants. So uh, that would uh, resolve this part for the transaction because uh, later on there are multiple blockchain and then they offer really, really fast speed of transactions. So, so that uh, they don't need to wait 
so long to until the confirmation and Lightning Network also help. Uh, we support Lightning Network as well. And then for the uh, price volatility, we settle with the uh, merchants in stable coins. So when people pay in their Bitcoin or Ethereum, we settle instantly based on the rate that they pay. And then those amount of money will be settled in the stable coins, which is patched to US dollar value. So the merchants actually receive stable coin, not Bitcoin or Ethereum. That would help them to mitigate the risk of the volatility. Sure. Yeah. That makes that makes sense. What about the consumer? I mean, is there a I suppose there's a chance that a consumer could come in thinking they had a certain amount of Bitcoin and then they're like, what happened? <laughs> Saying that they don't right. have as much. Is that is that a concern? So basically when the consumer they come to the store, they want to spend crypto, they they know they have a certain amount of uh, crypto that they can spend. And they can actually they just they just pay in crypto. So if you would like to pay Ethereum, you would just pay in Ethereum. And we have some cases that people just take their ledger to spend. So uh, they take the ledger app, uh, which is a ledger live app, but they forgot to bring their hardware wallet, the ledger itself. So you have to, you know, take that hardware wallet together so that the transaction would happen. So. There are some cases that uh, we need to explain uh, and also the team on the ground need to explain how the how this wallet work mm -hmm. and how the multiple blockchain works to the merchants. That's that's what we just said. There are a lot of uh, educations going on yeah. on site. Yeah. Um, you guys have been working on this, it's funny, I could tell from almost seven years, uh -huh. uh, at least from the company's founding. What what have been the biggest hurdles for you in, in getting a, a crypto POS up and running? Right. I think the biggest challenges would be uh, the, the regulation has been changed like constantly. Yeah. So we cannot commit a very long-term service with our merchants because in some jurisdiction, they were asked to uh, apply license or registration to take crypto payment or uh, they can sell crypto because the device itself offer not only a set crypto as a payment, but also sell crypto. Mm -hmm. So they need to apply license in the countries where the laws has to apply. And then this is one. And then the second is that the technology has been involved very quickly. And you have seen, uh, we started on uh, Ethereum blockchain, and then we see BNB smart chains coming up and then Tron network and then Polygon and then Solana. So you have to constantly to integrate the blockchains that was, you know, the consumer preferred to use. Right. So, yeah. so that they won't come to your store and then the merchant, when the merchant offer uh, accepting crypto payment, but we cannot support a certain blockchain. So we have to look into integrate multiple blockchain. And then the downside of m integrating multiple blockchain is that the merchant has to learn as well. Their staff has to learn as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, this could be a issues. Uh, there are a lot of educations going on. And also with multiple currency that the crypto market has, some people may just pay in a fake token. So there are fake USDT in the market and then merchant doesn't know quite, quite know. And then our POS device will accept the fake token. So okay. to kind of like helping the merchants to avoid this, this type of issues. If they just have their own wallet, they, they might just accept whatever tokens that the customer pay. And then there's no screening, filtering those invalid tokens that's a really good point that's a really good point i didn't think about that yeah that you could that, that, yeah that you guys are sort of the gateway that that keeps people from uh accidentally uh accepting tokens that aren't real yeah and also for the uh there are some addresses like blacklist addresses that would label 
to be uh to be a sponsor the ter terrorist activities we also block those type of address just to make sure that the merchants don't get involved with this this issues yeah that's a, another great point <laughs> yeah. I thought of, yeah, that's yeah. they were just like oh i was that thing crypto that's from the criminal <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah 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 so so i have i have a coinbase wallet and mm -hmm. I can just, I can use that directly at the point of sale. Yes, you can. Kind of, kind of like when you get Google pay or something like that, similar to that. Right. Um, it, uh, it will, uh, for example, if you, if you have the tokens that we support like USDT, USDC, BNB or, um, Bitcoin or, um, Ethereum, PAX, uh, PAXG, we can support on multiple blockchain. So as long as you have those on those blockchain and then you have enough gas, gas fee to pay, then there's no problem. It's just like you are sending tokens to to another, mm -hmm. yeah, another wallet. But you have that, again, like we talked about, you have that layer of protection as the merchant to make yeah, sure yeah, of course. it's is legitimate. Yeah, it's legitimate. And and for merchants, they have a dashboard. Not only you to see the machines, uh, the point of sale device, that we have, basically they have a, a backend system. They can look at all their transaction on from different blockchain on the dashboard so that they cool. they can track the um, payment very easily. Oh, that's great. So, so, so let's talk about this XPOS product. It, so if I go into a business mm -hmm. and they have XPOS and I want to use my Ethereum to pay. So t tell me, how, how does it work? Right. I can show you a demo. Yeah. For those of you listening on uh, on podcasts, feel free to jump on YouTube and check this out. You can see the demo or the, the demo is also on the Pundi X uh, YouTube channel as well. Right. Let me share my screen. So I'll demo um, from uh, using Lightning Network to pay Bitcoin. Okay. okay? Yeah. Yeah. So you enter your the amount that you need to pay. So in this in this sample is sixty five dollars, and then it shows QR code. And for the user, just scan and accept, and that's it. The yellow box means that it's confirmed. That was it. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Wow, that, that's even faster than you described. That's, that's yeah, it crazy. is. I think Lightning that we really do a really great job on uh, speed speed up the transaction for Bitcoin. Wow, that's that's awesome. So, it, a side note, isn't it funny how how QR codes have come back so hardcore? Like, they, remember when QR codes were there and then they kind of went away, and then the pandemic and and uh, uh, digital currency really brought the QR code back. So, I never thought that it would make a comeback, but yeah. And recently, we launched a, a in-store QR code solution. So the merchants, all the merchants needs is to just post their uh, QR code uh, in front of their cashier, and then the user just scan the QR code. This is just the one QR code, but uh, the user can pay through different blockchain, even Binance Pay. They can use Binance Pay to to pay. So so. For merchants, we don't need to spend a lot of education time to educate them like which blockchain it is. So the decision power will be on the consumer because nowadays consumer is smarter than the merchants. They know how to pay. Right. So they just, just scan the QR code. They just pick up the, the chain, the blockchain they need, they want to pay and then the currency or any payments uh, solution and then they just complete the transaction on their phone and both merchants and user or customer will receive the receipt when the transaction is confirmed. Wow. And then of course, as you mentioned, the merchants being paid in a stable coin or, or is it a fiat right. currency as well? Like you're, you're paying them basically in a, in a fiat currency? Right. In some countries, our franchisee will be able to help with the fiat settlement. So for example, like South Africa, they provide fiat settlements. So basically, it's our franchisee. They receive USDT, stable coin, as, a, as the settlement from us. And then they convert into the local fiat currency for the merchants. 
and then they send to the bank, the merchant's bank. So the next day you will get the settlements in fiat when after you you receive the crypto payment. So it's very fast. That is that's incredible. That's mm -hmm. incredible. So I was on your site. Tell me about Function X. Right. Uh, Function X is a kind of like a project, the layer one blockchain network that we built for DeFi activities. So uh, we, because since we started as a point of sales builder, a crypto point of sale builder, and then there are multiple blockchain that we need to uh, support. Sure. So we thought it makes sense to uh, to build a layer one blockchain that support multiple blockchain and then to have some decentralized applications to run on that so that we can onboard the users after they first onboard from our retail spaces. And also they will explore more about advanced crypto activity like DeFi. So uh, we use that network. We started this layer one infrastructure by uh, introducing it as a like the third generation of internet. At that time, no one is talking about Web3. Mm -hmm. And I think when we mention it, it's really, really early. And then we promote the concept that you should own your data. And then, um, and then pandemic hits. And then uh, we kind of like building it to have integrate more uh, DeFi applications, this network. As that include decentralized exchange, which call Margin X. Uh, they build Function X as well. And also there are swap uh, available on this network. And also there are farm uh, systems uh, called Baklava. They also build on Function X. So we kind of like provide a variety of DeFi applications on uh, through Function X uh, to the crypto users, the more advanced users, so that we can run some experiments on this network and see how it goes before we take it to the mess. Hmm. Wow, that's really cool. That's ambitious to, to to do that as well, to do the to do the platform as well. Now, yeah, yeah. Anything that we implement, like blockchain, we support on Function X, and then we can take that to the pod system, so it's easier that our the layer one blockchain team to implement first and then and then we take their results or learning and then take it to the POS device. So it's a very much uh, integrated effort. Yeah, it's good kind of creating its own ecosystem, if you will, mm -hmm. there. Yeah. That's really that's really cool. That's really cool. I wanted to follow up on something that you you said before. You we were talking about, you know, have setting up wallet and stuff like that in crypto. I, I feel like a lot of people are, well, some people are anti-crypto, but there's a lot of people also that are just don't understand it. And mm -hmm. setting up a wallet can be in, kind of intimidating, you know, like like with, with the, the crazy passcode and, and like all the stuff that you have to do with it, especially if you think about maybe older people who aren't the most technologically, you know, in, in tune people. And it is, what is the biggest barrier in your mind as far as mm -hmm. getting people to adopt blockchain technology or or just accept that it's it's a viable you know form of, of a viable payment option right you're rightly point out the difficulty and then the challenges because when we were on the front line uh, with the merchants and then the merchants talked to us that there are a lot of people still there they don't know about crypto and then uh, it's, very, it's very difficult to educate them especially when the merchants would like to give away like a NFT or crypto uh, loyalty points to their their customer, their loyal customer, and then they have to go through the wallet setup process. Sometime in the bar or in the pub, and those customer were drunk, and then you cannot create <laughs> a wallet in this type of situation, right? Oh, that would be tough. <laughs> yeah, and then. I remember the merchant said they they even write down the private key for them and then they feel so wrong about they know their private key. Yep. So so when we hear about this type of feedback and then we, we think of if, if we can uh, design a solution that would just 
it's a no brainer. So to create a wallet. So what we have created, I think we launched it uh, the last year. Uh, this one. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one is the PS car. We call it PS car. And it is a self custodial custodian wallet and it support multiple blockchain and there's a private key inside. This cause uh we actually is the R D project we did with Infineon. Do you know Infineon? It's a semiconductor uh company. Okay. They the chipset. So inside this card, there's a, their chipset. And then we use their Sakura blockchain security solutions to build this car. And then we want to make it very affordable. It's just like uh, if you customize for 500 cars, it's just call you, cost you like $11 per card. So you can customize 5, 000, uh, 500 of it. And depending on merchant, how much they would like to sell to their customer, they can sell, uh, they can give it away to their, you know, lawyer customer. Yeah, yeah. With this card, you can deposit tokens uh, to the cards and then make it as a loyalty card, like VIP card. So they, when they get this card, there's a private key inside. You don't need to write down a private key. And then you just tap to interact with our POS system. And also uh, later on, when you go back home, you want to see your balance, you download the PS card app to see the balance. However, if you need to transact, you need this card. It's just like your hardware wallet and you need to tap it to authorize the transaction with this card because the private key is in this card, not in your phone. So that would solve the issues that the complication for for the first time users who use crypto. So it just like they get a gift card and then they just uh, use the points inside there. So uh, yeah, cool. it's pretty much of it. And we also do a very, the things that, that my CEO or co-founder, I like, feel very absurd, but I, I managed to convince him that um, because these cards uh, needs, if you would like, a lot of people will may ask if I, what happened if I lose this card? And then we tell people, if you lose the card, you lose, you lose the key and you just like the cash, you lose the is you lose the cash inside the key. So we don't recommend you to store a lot of the large value of token inside. Mm -hmm. Sort um, of like having a gift card, a physical gift card in your wallet. Or yeah. Something that if you lose it. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just lose it mm -hmm. because, um, uh, before we launch this car, we do some uh, testing with the real users, and then we set up PIN code. It's just like the SIM card that you have to enter your PIN code to use your SIM card. But if you exceed three times of trials, and then it's still, and you cannot get into your SIM card or this car, and then it will lock your asset permanently. So. <laughs> A lot of, uh, most of the time, like 80%, 90% of the time, people forget their pin code. Mm. So we just remove this layer and then to make it super easy for people to adopt because, uh, yeah, we don't want to add an extra layer of that. So this is very helpful for the first time user. But if you become an advanced user, then you can choose use Ledger, you know, more advanced or secure solution to protect your own crypto, especially if you want to store a large amount of it in a certain place, then uh, you need to buy something uh, more advanced. But this this is the first time user to get into crypto. Yeah, that that, that could be a great, you know, intro uh, introduction for people yeah. to crypto and and maybe like you know, kind of to take down some of the some of the barriers or at least the the mental barriers that people might mm -hmm. have. Uh, when it comes to the to technology overall, yes. Well, very cool. I've also before we go, I want I want you to know that I I did convert some of my crypto into pundi, uh, so don't let me down. Okay. <laughs> I, I want to retire, so I need that to go up in value very quickly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> I I sense a lot of pressures here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're we're very hard for that, but 
yeah, the Elcoin season hopefully is coming with, I think, uh, interest rates is very crucial to drive up the risky assets. So, yeah, look forward to the ride. Well, Pekko, thank you so much for talking with me about Pundi X. Uh, it's a great, it's, an, it's a really intriguing system, and I'm really excited to see uh, where it goes from here. So thanks for being on the show and, and letting everybody know about uh, what you guys are doing. Thank you so much for having me, Kevin. It's my pleasure to be here.